right, so my name is Leila Khan and I'm an author, a public speaker and a self-mastery mentor. And I'm here today to interview Katie R. Kevin T. Robertson. Hey Leila, how are you today? I'm good, I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing super fantastic. Thanks so much for setting up the interview. You are so, so welcome. So I would love to know, what kind of value do you provide conference coordinators and event planners? Well, what I help conference coordinators do is I create more like partnerships and I provide key takeaway strategies for their audience and I help their conference attendees achieve maximum levels of focus by helping them with their learning solutions and also with helping them achieve their desired outcomes. Fantastic. And how do you assist meeting planners with their learning objectives? Well, you know, it's a lot of ways, you know, the preparation, being a professional speaker is really, really key in doing that. You know, I make sure I do a lot of research on the organization or the corporation or association before I accept the speaking engagement. And, you know, that really boils down to, you know, being prepared. And as a speaker, you got to do a lot of research. You have to make sure that you ask a lot of questions and you deliver a lot of value. You know, this just isn't about the part that makes you feel good <clears throat> with the you know, as your average motivational, inspirational speaker will do. You know, I'm a consummate professional speaker and I take a lot of pride in what it is that I do to provide that kind of value to the conference coordinator, meeting or event planner. My, my job is to make them look like a rock star, make them look number one when I come in to deliver my services. Fantastic. And how do you help conference attendees with their desired outcomes? Okay, well, you know, the conference attendees, are very much like you and I when we go take a conference, you know, or we, we attend a training or we take a seminar, you know, we want a lot of value. We want to learn something. We want to grow. And uh, so I put myself in the shoes of people that is attending my audience. Over the last 35 years, I've had over a million plus people in my audiences for trainings, uh, developments, things of that nature. And when you're talking about training and development, you're talking about something that's not the end all be all, but I take it serious. And so I put myself in the shoes of the person sitting in my audience. I think about what kind of value would I like to hear? You know, what type of learning objectives would I like them to help me accomplish? They are the expert and I'm sitting in the audience. So obviously they're looking, they're looking for, uh, for something from me to help them achieve their desired out outcomes and their learning objectives. And that's really all about putting yourself in the other person's shoes. It's really just about helping them achieve what they want to take out of there with them. The key thing I always ask myself, what is the one thing, if I'm sitting in the audience, that I want to walk out of there with that's going to have the biggest impact on my life? And that's my goal as a professional speaker. Yeah, and that's so important. That is so, so important. It really enlivens the experience for the attendee. Absolutely. Because, you know, think about it. Somebody spending their hard-earned money to come here, uh, a long list of speakers, and when it's your turn to get up there on that stage, and when it's your turn to deliver value, you have to really bring it. And I believe in being, uh, you know, delivering high energy programs that really speak to the very core of the challenges that people face in the world today. Mm, fantastic. So how have you had success pivoting during the global pandemic over the past year or so? Oh, wow. Well, the, the, the pivot has been really, really a, a lot of fun for me because you know, my business services are online, <clears throat> excuse me. And what I've learned over the course of the pandemic is, you know, building these partnerships has really been a lot of fun. You know, you have to be able to take your level of expertise and you have to partner with conference coordinators. A lot of them were, you know, just kind of flopping around and twisting in the wind. They didn't know what to do. Everybody was kind of, you know, thrown off, thrown off course when the pandemic first hit. But you know, we're just like dinosaurs. You know, we get a chance to uh, <clears throat> we adapt. You know, uh, the, now now this is the, this is the key. The ones who didn't pivot successfully, a lot of companies have died off like the dinosaurs. But a lot of the uh, reptiles, they they were able to adapt and they were able to turn into something different. And I believe that that's really what you what you should be doing throughout the pandemic. And what we've been able to do as a company, as Speaker Focus is we have really been able to adapt to our clients' needs. People need more. Training and development is huge. Everybody wants to be a speaker, coach, or consultant. I call it the golden triangle. You know, And if you're in that space right now, there's just, 
You know, it's a billion, billions and billions of dollars being spent every single year on training and development. The fact that you can access these learning tools faster because of Zoom and the internet and these social networking platforms and online courses being available, you know, that's how we've been able to pivot and we have tripled our business throughout the pandemic, which we're very proud of that. And uh, we followed a successful blueprint model. So, and we teach other people how to do that as well. That is absolutely fantastic. That's absolutely fantastic. So why is it then important to create strong partnerships with event planners? Well, the main reason why it's important to create the partnership is because the event planner brings a certain level of skill. You know, the event planner has the, the logistical, you know, nightmare to deal with. You know, they're in the top five when it comes to stress. They, are, they are provide the venue. You know, they have a responsibility to the constituency of their organization and their membership. And, you know, they're looking to partner with speakers that know what they're doing. So as a speaker, you've got to have the insights about that organization. You've got to be able to do a proper needs assessment so you can figure out what the conference coordinator needs. What is the theme or purpose of the event? You know, what are they trying to accomplish? How are you going to make them look good? It's all about you really creating that partnership and you want them to be able to hire you again and again. And the only way they're going to do that is you got to bring extreme value. So I believe in making sure that I ask the right questions. I match the proper speaking services with the conference coordinators need. And, you know, you got to be able to be solution oriented. The way I look at it, keep it real simple. The conference coordinator has a need and I have a solution. That's the only reason why they want to hire me as a speaker. And I believe in bringing a lot of value when I come speak at the conference. It is a privilege to get on that stage to mm -hmm. speak. And I don't take it for granted. Yeah, fantastic. And it's so important to just keep building those relationships, isn't it, with the event planners? Um, because they, like you said, they have a need. And it's so important that with your solution, that there's a win-win situation in this. Absolutely. That's exactly what it's about, Layla. You know, it's about creating those win-win situations. Uh, one of my favorite mentors, Rick Doc Walker, Super Bowl champion from the uh, 1980s fun bunch, Washington Redskins in the NFL. And Doc always told me, you know, never do business with people you don't need. So you mm -hmm. don't, you don't want to make yourself expendable. And so I, you know, I over deliver, you know, I believe in over delivering more than anybody in my space. And I'm in the top 20% of leadership speakers on planet Earth who know how to transfer knowledge at an extremely high level, hold your attention for elongated periods of time while being entertaining. Now, that takes a lot of practice and a lot of you know, experience to be able to deliver that. You know, I have no intention on wasting that with the conference coordinator. You know, the conference coordinator is stressed out. They need help. And they need, they are speakers should be in a position to provide value to help not only the conference coordinator, because look at this, look at it this way. The conference coordinator is a gatekeeper and the, they're not going to give you the key to unlock the gate to put you in front of their audience unless you can prove to them that you are capable of being able to handle yourself as a leadership speaker. What I've learned over the number of years is that the conference coordinator simply doesn't give a damn about motivational inspiration. What they really care about is getting a return on their investment. And this is about business. And if, if I wanna help your business and you wanna help mine, then that win-win that you talked about is very, very important. You have to go in there and take care of business. Yeah, fantastic, fantastic. So tell me more about your leadership series. Well, you know, my leadership series, it all, it all stemmed from, you know, when I transitioned from being an average run-of-the-mill motivational, inspirational speaker many years ago into, you know, being a dynamic leadership speaker. So mm -hmm. I have a, a platinum leadership series for frontline employees, mid-level managers, and executives. And, you know, what we talk about is magnifying success in your personal and your professional vision. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there are a lot of things that happen on the frontline level for employees that managers and supervisors don't understand. And even people on the executive leadership level don't understand about the managers and supervisors. So what I teach on the Focus Tour is I teach the, the frontline employees how to be able to be more productive, be more efficient, get more out of their goals. You know, less than 10%, Layla, of employees understand what the company vision and mission statement is. So what that means is a frontline employee, when they come into work every day, it means that they really can't hit the ground running. They don't have any goals that they worked on a, a to-do list the day before or a week before. Yeah. And you, uh, the, the issue with managers 
is that managers, 76.8% of managers micromanage. They try to manage the job instead of trying to manage the person. Mm -hmm. On a managerial supervisory level, this is about your people skills. And you, you've got to be able to understand a person's strengths, limitations, characteristics, and their tendencies, and how they operate as a human being. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we have the biggest resource we have is human resources, you know, and you have to, you have to empower the, uh, the humans on your staff and your employees and the people on your team. If you don't take care of them, they're not going to take care of you. And then the executive ship, their listening skills are below 43.2%. Wow. And, you know, because they don't hear everything the same way managers or supervisors hear it. And they don't hear it the same way that the grassroots customer service level employees, the frontline people, they don't hear it on their level either. So you have, a, you have this, uh, this huge disparity between frontline employees, mid-level managers and executives. So what my Platinum Leadership Series does is make sure that all frontline employees, managers or supervisors and executives are all connecting and communicating on a high level. Yeah, and it's that, isn't it? It's that connection and that communication, which is absolutely key filtered all the way down, isn't it? And all the way up as well. Absolutely, Layla, you have 82 to 97% of our problems in our global workforce in the global workplace stem from block communication, no communication, low communication, ineffective communication. And it's really, really sad because everything we're trying to accomplish is tied into being an effective communicator. Yeah. So my focus strategies, and uh, my signature programs, they all tie into the very core of what we need to accomplish in the workforce. And I'm just thrilled to be able to deliver it. And that's my passion. That's what I was put here to do. And we can tell, we can feel that as well. You know, your energy is just lit up as, as you talk about that. And that's really powerful because, you know, that's what it's about when you just show up from, from that place of connection and communication and just loving what you do. And we can feel that, it's amazing. Absolutely, thanks so much. <laughs> So tell me about the focus tour. I know you mentioned it just briefly there, but tell me more about your focus tour. Well, the focus tour is, it was originally designed and it, to have uh, interchangeable parts, you know, uh, what we're going to be doing uh, coming up, especially as the pandemic is loosening up with the restrictions, we're going to be doing a lot of live events. And, you know, I'll be featuring speakers like you from the UK to fly in mm -hmm. to do events with me and also to promote other businesses. You know, I, I really believe in, what Zig Ziglar taught us is the more the more you figure out a way to help other people, then you're going to be able to help yourself and you're going to be able to grow. So my goal is to empower, you know, uh, consultants and coaches and speakers like yourself to uh, to 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 showcase what it is that they do to the rest of the world and to create the platform. What we've been able to do as a company at Speaker Focus is we've been able to dominate our market and we've been very uh, we become very skilled at mastering, you know, uh, paid advertising. And when you know how to put the butts in the seats and you know how to attract people to your brand and you know what kind of copy to write, you know what kind of content to put in front of people. We live in a different world now, mm -hmm. Layla, and you can get your information to people faster. So the Focus Tour is all about being able to highlight other speakers and, you know, be able to put on a showcase of training talent that the world needs. We're, we're hurting right now. And the Focus Tour is coming to your country, it's coming to a city or town near you. And we're gonna, we're gonna, be, we're gonna put on a show and that's what it's really about. I'm an entertainer by nature. So my goal from the very start was to put on a show, you know, provide mm -hmm. training, provide educational materials at a high level, but be entertaining because the more you entertain people, the more they're gonna wanna sit there and watch and what you have to say. So putting a great product on stage is very, very important. And that's why we associate ourselves with the best. That's why I'm talking to you. Yay. <laughs> so I'm really curious, what inspired the, the focus tool? What's the inspiration behind it? Well, you know, I, I started to go to a lot of, of conferences and training, you know, and, uh, you know, as I'm approaching my 53rd birthday, uh, you know, I started speaking when I was right out of high school at 17. When I graduated, I got my first paid speaking engagement at 18. So I used to undervalue education. And I didn't really pay attention to it. And, and I, was, I was suffering a lot in the beginning. I was trying to figure stuff out by myself. And you know, then all of a sudden, one day I got this epiphany that I, I needed mentorship. Mentorship is a, is, plays a crucial role in your growth and your development. So what I learned is that 
now after taking 276 plus personal and professional development seminars from downloading a little $47 PDF uh, document off the internet to taking a $30,000 boot camp, you know, at a, at a on a on a luxury resort in an island, you know, listening to some sales mastery training and everything in between is that you have to create a great learning experience and I learned that from not taking learning experiences serious very early on in my career. But then something clicked in my mind, Layla, something snapped inside of me one day when I took my first seminar. It was called How to Communicate with Tact, Finesse, Diplomacy, and Skill. And that changed my life. It, sa it saved me because it, it, it took me uh, on a different trajectory uh, with my speaking career because I started to, to understand about being calm and presenting very polished poison professionally. Mm -hmm. I learned how I should have, you know, watch the, the rate of my speed, the pitch, the resonance, the height, the accuracy, the cadence, the timing, all of these things play a huge role in you being an effective communicator. And I wanted to be an effective communicator. I just didn't want to just be talking fast and, and uh, hanging out with my friends on the corner and just talking street talk. I, I wanted to be professional. And now my, de my desire, my goal is to have other people that want the same thing that I want, which is to achieve higher level success. That's mm -hmm. what the Focus Tour is all about. Fantastic, fantastic. So tell us more about um, training and development. Why is training and development so important in the global marketplace? Oh, wow. Well, Layla, I would say that it's not the end all be all, but what a lot of companies that do not promote training, like Google, for instance, they promote training, they create an atmosphere, they facilitate an environment so the employees can thrive. And, you know, if you're not training, you're not growing. Yeah, you know, it, it's, impo it's impossible to learn the game all at one time. You know, we don't have the skill set, uh, athletic ability to dribble a basketball and fly through the air like LeBron James or Michael Jordan. You know, they were gifted with those things. And, and, and a lot of us, we are gifted with certain things. I was gifted with the ability to write and paint and draw and all these creative arts definitely have the gift of gab, you know, and talking. But it's, it's bigger than that. You know, it's bigger than that. You know, you have to, you know, if you want to operate at a, a level of expert, it yes. takes 10,000 hours to achieve that level of greatness. So my, so my goal is to make sure that people put the hours in. Yeah. They, have the, they have the resources accessible to them on the, on the platforms and the training platforms that we create so they can empower themselves with the right kind of information. I'm not talking about some, some bullshit and some fluff here. I'm talking about something that's real. Mm -hmm. Professional people want something that's real because they are going for the money. You had, uh, in the United States alone, you had over 44, 44 million new business applications that were filed. What does that say to you? That, set, that says to you that, you know, people want to grow in business, but also employees want to grow as well. They don't want to hit that ceiling and people are looking for more opportunities. So that's the reason why training and development is so important. That's the reason why leadership development programs and succession planning is so important in these corporations. People want the best for their families. Layla, they want to be able to grow. They want to be able to support their families. They, they have a vision. They want to be able to reach next level success and they need training material in order to do that. Yeah, exactly. I totally resonate with that. You know, the ambitious people, the people who are really rising to the top and, and reaching for the stars in many ways, like they want continual, constant training because they want to get better and better and better. Um, and so, of course, it's really, really important that training and development is provided um, within the global marketplace and that it is something uh, available and, and normal as well and standard. Absolutely. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's amazing you mentioned standard because in a lot of companies, this is not a standard. Yeah. You know, it is, a, it, it is an anomaly. It doesn't even exist. And, you know, these kind of things right now. And then what happens is you have employees that, that start, they suffer. They, mm -hmm. they come in every single day. They don't understand what the vision and mission is because the executive ship is too busy focusing on the bottom line. The managers and supervisors are too busy running around with a management style. I call like a cut, run around like a chicken with your hair cut off. <laughs> and it, it's, it's, not really, it's not really any discipline there. So the employees have no expectation. They don't know what they're supposed to be doing. And so, so what happens is I work with many, many companies over the last 35 years, I've delivered over 2,700 
paid speaking engagements. So that's a lot of presentations. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the companies that I work with, I'm going to say in the neighborhood of at least 35%, have never bought in a speaker. Have, they don't, they've never done any on-site training. They don't have any training curriculum set up. I had to design it for them a lot of cases. So, you know, it, it's because a, a lot of companies, they spend massive amount of hours just focusing on, on the deliverable of what they do very, very well. But they don't understand that this is going to be a mouthful that I say, Layla, because, you know, somebody asked me, well, KTR, what is it, what is it that you do? I say, well, I specialize in organizational infrastructure business management. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that, that's all the things on the inside of the business that really keep it organized. Mm. See, I was put here, and my purpose in life was, was put here to teach people how to clarify their focus, mm. magnify success in their personal and professional vision. I was put here to teach you how to organize your focus. And in order to do that, you've got to take care of the finite details and you've got to teach your employees about the finite details. You've got to point them in the right direction. The resources are there. The human development resources are there. We've got to keep growing our team because if you don't take care of them, they're not going to take care of you. And that's really what this is all about. We're damaged right now, Layla. We're hurting as a global, you know, as a global workforce right now. And the, the pandemic is, is going to have uh, an effect on all of us and our, our mental well-being for a long period of time. And people want to be seen. They, they want to be recognized. You know, employees want to be recognized um, for their efforts, for their time, for their energy. And, and that's where training and development is so important and so, so paramount to their progress. Absolutely. Absolutely. People do. They, you know, you, you, you talked about it before. People, they want to reach for higher level success. But oftentimes they don't know how to do that. So, you know, what happens? We stay stuck like a stick in the mud. The number one cause of procrastination is when you're overwhelmed. So when you don't know what you want to focus on, when you have 10 things in front of you at the same time, well, which one do I focus on first? I'm confused. I don't know if I should focus on family. I don't know if I should focus on my career. I don't know if I should focus on losing weight, my mental well-being. I don't know if I should focus on uh, getting the roof repaired this month. Uh, you know, people have to make life decisions. And then you got five other things, you know, fake friends and business associates, uh, negative relationships bringing you down, uh, being in debt you know, paying off the mortgage, whatever is your thing. But I'll tell you this, real focus, Layla, is concentrating on one thing at a time. Mm -hmm. And I guarantee you when, you, when you pick a focus, priorities that you're focusing on, it will automatically raise the visibility of everything else that you're, that you're working on. And then everything else is just gonna start falling in order organically and you don't have to force it or rush it. But most people procrastinate because they're overwhelmed and they don't know where to start. I would say the very first thing is when you're overwhelmed is you got to simplify yeah. simplify take out anything that you do not need get rid of relationships anything that's not serving you uplifting you and moving you forward with your goals then you got to simply get rid of it you got to make a decision and you can't be on the fence because the clock is ticking on us all this is not a dress rehearsal we don't have all day long to tighten it up and get it together every day you wake up you should be focusing on the the top uh, seven to ten priorities your average person can accomplish seven to 10 things throughout the body of one workday, seven to 10. And then you have a personal list. Pick the seven to 10 things you want to do professionally and personally, and then go to bed and get some rest and then do it all over again. Important equals action. Urgent equals panic and react. Which working style would you prefer? Oh, that's amazing. Like there's so much value there. So many like mic drops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank yeah. you. So powerful, so passionate. It's really coming through, um, which is fantastic. So let's talk about um, the instability that corporations face and have faced during the pandem pandemic. Could you tell me a bit more about your experience and so on there? Well, and I'm, I'm very fortunate, Layla. I get a chance to talk to everybody on the front lines. I mean, the pandemic has brought you and I together. You know, uh, we've known each other for, for several months now. And, you know, I follow your your business model and your, you know, you have an amazing, you know, business that you're, that you're operating in the UK mm -hmm. and, you know, you're thriving through the pandemic, just like speaker focus, but there's a lot of people that have these deficiencies and limitations. And we, there's a lot of dysfunction that's happening in the global marketplace right now. And it, and it is, it is, it is a lot of instability. So if a company is not fiscally responsible, or if they are struggling, you know, financially, obviously that's going to cause chaos and panic throughout their work staff because 
you know, what is it that we're looking for when we take on a job or, or when we have uh, a lot of entrepreneurs are fortunate, like, like you are, like I am, where we have predictability and consistency. We have a predictable way to earn revenue and it's consistent. That's what allows us to pay our bills. And uh, it's a lot of sacrifice and struggle that comes along with that, as you well know, you know, however, you know, that's what everybody's looking for. So in a world that's unstable, how can you count on uh, predictability and consistency? You can't. So that's why people are looking for more opportunity. And I believe that right now, more so than ever, is the greatest time in the history of the conference industry for speakers, coaches, and consultants. Mm -hmm. This is a, the pandemic has, has really allowed us to be able to present our content on more platforms. And the fact that we do have these multiple platforms that we can present the content on, it just creates more opportunity for the speakers, coaches, and consultants who are prepared. Mm -hmm. Let me say that, you know, people have pivoted. People talk about the pivot all the time. Well, the pivot helps with the instability. You know why? Because now we're able to get the content to corporations faster through Zoom sessions. You, you can do on-site strategic work sessions. You can deliver all this content through video. It's like having video on demand. You can do it through your smartphone, your mobile device, your desktop, or your, or your tablet. And that creates a great opportunity because now you can travel around the world. This pandemic is not gonna last forever. Like we gotta start being more optimistic. There's millions of people getting vaccinated every single day. And when it is over, all the speakers, coaches, and consultants, the one who could provide the value, like myself, I'm in the top 20% of leadership speakers on planet earth who know how to transfer knowledge at an extremely high level, hold your attention for elongated periods of time while being entertaining. Mm -hmm. Now, with that being said, we can remedy this instability. Mm -hmm. We have to come together as a team. Yeah. You know, you have the services as a consultant, as a coach, as a speaker, and the corporations globally, they have a lot of dysfunction. So the corporation has got to be able to justify the cost to bring in the speaker to help them remedy those massive amount of dysfunctions. And on top of that, we have where the, the pandemic has caused mental health challenges. Mm -hmm. Listen, three days a week, I live very close to the beach. So three days a week, I, I take my Zoom sessions outside of the, of the office. I don't want to be trapped in here behind this signage. I don't want to be trapped in the office. The walls feel like they're closing in. So if I started to realize that my mental health was being affected, what do you think is happening to people that maybe don't like their job, but they're stuck at home yeah. and they have to do it to take care of their family? Like my goal is to put people in more positions of doing things that are fulfilling mm -hmm. instead of doing things that are just making them temporarily happy. Oh, we, I got my paycheck on Friday. Layla, do you know what that feels like? You get your, you get a paycheck at the end of the week and you're like, oh, I'm happy. And all of a sudden Monday rolls around and you, you really don't want to go back to the job, but you have to because you got to pay, pay your bills. I want people to tie the vision, the mission, the goals, the objectives, the whole nine yards. I want them to tie it into something that is fulfilling. Fulfillment yeah. is sustainable, Layla. Happiness yeah. is fleeting. Happiness yeah. is sex, drugs, rock and roll, uh, doing something that's just going to last for a minute. Now, we do need happiness in our lives because we do need those temporary, uh, those temporary, temporary hits of, you know, uh, what would you call it? Happiness or passion or whatever. Endorphins and passion, uh, like emotions and so on. Exactly. We do need those things. However, fulfillment is sustainable. Fulfillment lasts forever. And what I'm working on through my company, Speaker Focus, a professional development company, we are helping people have some sustainability so they can live forever. I want to live forever. And the, you know, <laughs> my, my, my physical body may expire one day, yeah. but my dream and my passion and my purpose and the legacy that I'm working on right now, it's going to, la it's going to last forever, Layla. And, yeah. and it's going to last generation after generation. People are still going to be talking about the focus tour and people are still going to be talking about how to organize your focus and clarifying your vision and attacking your goals with force. And nothing makes me more happy than that every single day. And nothing makes me more fulfilled all the way to the top every single day. And that's, that's the passion that you see in my eyes. I just want people to get it and I want people to live a better lifestyle. Yeah, I love it and I feel it. I feel it for the vibes. <laughs> so powerful. Thank so uh, what kind of emerging opportunities are on the horizon for the global business community? Oh, wow. You know, I really feel in my heart of hearts that when we come out of the pandemic, there is going to be a lot more 
uh, technology that is going to help us to do our jobs faster. It's going to help us do it more profitable. Um, and also it's going to be able to, it's going to be able to build a, a stronger workforce. Mm -hmm. I believe that we're all getting a hard lesson out of this pandemic, including myself. And, uh, you know, what we should be learning out of this is that the technology like Zoom and StreamYard and these other platforms that allow you to deliver training curriculum and to deliver your content at a very, very high level, I believe that the, uh, the companies that have been languishing and fallen behind and they haven't been able to keep up with that technology, it's almost going to like, it's, it's almost like it's going to be mandatory. Like mm -hmm. it's manda mandatory now to, to, you know, to, to do your conference online, at least have it as an option, yeah. right? Because until people feel stronger to, or feel more comfortable, I should say, in their own minds and everybody's different. Mm -hmm. The pandemic is like asking people about religion or politics. Everybody has a different opinion about it. Mm -hmm. and, and, and none of us are ever right, including myself. I haven't been right about the pandemic. It's not as worse as I thought it was, but it's 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 been bad enough, yeah. right? And no matter what my opinion has been on a, on a given day, I haven't been all the way accurate. And that's the tricky thing about this whole situation. But I tell you this, one, about the emerging opportunities, I see, I see freedom like never before. I see, um, I'm an optimist. I see companies being more profitable like never before. I see, I see the little guy being able to dominate in a space where they've never been able to dominate before. I see that the restrictions, uh, uh, the, these restrictions that we put on ourselves when it comes to business, I see those being lifted. I see the, the low level of self-esteem. The fact that I could connect with with a, a beautiful entrepreneur by the name of Layla Khan, all the way from the UK. And she is like super smart. And then I get a chance to learn about her business. She's able to teach me like I'm able to teach her. And, and all of these things, whether or not we connect through WhatsApp, which cost us what? No money. When we connect through Zoom, which cost us no money, but we're empowering each other, which is going to do what? Make us money. Yeah. You see, the more, the more you focus on the money, the more you're not gonna get any. Yeah. The more you focus on the passion, the mission, the vision, the purpose, then the laws of attraction, these formidable laws of the universe, they start kicking in and overdrive. And the universe is gonna start conspiring to help you and me and everybody else in the world. The positive mind has to shine 900 billion times brighter than the sun. You gotta keep shining with the rays of success. And you have to keep connecting with people because you don't have it all figured out. I got to connect with Layla so I can get the other part that I'm missing, right? And then I'm better. And then I take the piece that Layla is teaching me and I go out and I make more money. I'm able to get on another level because of that type of mindset. So I would say to everybody out there, as we're bringing this wonderful interview to a close, I would say that you've got to stay optimistic. You've got, you've got to learn to partner with technology because it has changed my life. Technology is beautiful. It's not evil, right? It's not somewhere in a tower trying to do to do bad to us. You've got to learn how to get the best out of it. And that is how that is how I feel like we all can come together. And though it's, it's just massive amount of opportunities. Last but not least, Layla, you have 1700 millionaires being created through, uh, throughout the world every single day. This is globally every single day. And that is because of the technology is allowing people to get their products and service deliverables to the marketplace faster to a larger pool of people who want to learn and grow. I've never been more confident and I've never been more proud to be in the training and development in the leadership field in my life as a professional speaker, a thought leader in the global marketplace. I mean, it has just got me excited like I've never been before ever in my career. Yeah, it's such an exciting time to be alive and it really is a time for optimism and for opportunities and to, to kind of um, to find the diamonds, you know, in, in the dirt or whatever the expression is. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> you know the opportunities are all out there so this has been amazing thank you so much for your time and your energy and just for bringing it for bringing it so thank you so much ktr for this wonderful opportunity and this wonderful interview Layla, thank you so much you did a wonderful job you know your line of questioning was amazing and you know what it what it shows me is that you actually care about the global community as well by mm -hmm. you know participating in this interview with me and you know uh, being a part of a special project that I have coming up and this will not be the last time that we work together I can guarantee you that
Yay. No, I totally agree with you. <laughs> I totally agree with you. It's been amazing. Right, uh, I'll be talking to you real soon, okay? Definitely. All right. You take 